Hello everyone, we're the Hobby Farm Guys. I'm Brian. And I'm Steve. And behind the scenes at Hobby Farm Guys headquarters is Eric. Headquarters? Heck, just looks like a basement to me. A while back we looked at raising chickens in high heat climates. And one viewer wanted to know how humidity affects poultry and livestock. And since he's a subscriber, and we pretty much treat our subscribers like royalty, hint hint, we're going to grant him that wish in just a few seconds. It seems obvious to us that high humidity can play a role in the health and welfare of our livestock and poultry. After all, most of us have experienced how these conditions feel to us, and it makes sense that our animals will be affected as well. But how? And to what extent? And what should we do about it? It turns out that these questions aren't too easy to answer. Yeah, that's because there's actually very little been written on the subject, and the research can be difficult to find and translate to the actions we should take as keepers of farm animals. But that's why we're here, right? To go through the research, to find out what we can learn, and more importantly, what we can do with the information we locate. Now, the first way humidity can affect your livestock and poultry deals with disease. Both how the disease is spread and how it affects animals when they are infected. As a general rule, uh, viral diseases like Newcastle disease in chickens or foot and mouth in livestock are more easily spread when humidity is extremely low. This is because they're more likely to become airborne in conditions of low air moisture. But once infected, high humidity often causes viral infections to affect the animal more severely. I say this as a general rule because, as we've all learned in the last couple of years, not all viruses are created equally. How true, right? Uh, now when it comes to bacterial diseases like salmonella, very high humidity will both make it easier for the disease to spread and more severely affect the infected animal. The same is true for fungal infections. Again, these are general rules, but not true in every case. Understanding how humidity affects the spread and severity of different diseases can help you diagnose illness, make decisions about which animals or breeds to keep, decide whether to provide vaccinations, and even decide on the diet you'll provide. Some good advice is to talk to your local extension office, to know what diseases are prevalent in your area, and then follow their advice for prevention measures. Yeah. High heat combined with high relative humidity can also negatively affect your animal's health in other ways. Most obviously, these conditions can increase incidence of heat stress. Of course, you'll want to ensure your animals in these conditions have plenty of water and shade. You also may want to consider avoiding animals with thick coats or wool. And if you do opt to keep them, make sure they're sheared or trimmed regularly. High relative humidity can also cause skin irritations to be more common. And this creates an opportunity for infectious diseases to more easily set in. Abnormal conditions of high relative humidity can also affect an animal's ability to produce meat, eggs, and dairy, the primary reason many of us want to have these animals in the first place. For example, pigs in high heat, high humidity environments show reduced feed intake. This results in lower weights and or longer times to reach market weight. Right? Dairy animals may see decreased yields and studies have found that uh, lower milk fat levels and protein levels in dairy cows which were kept in high humidity climates. And humidity also can have an effect on animal growth and development. So chicks exposed to low humidity in their first week, which is generally below 50%, can experience dehydration. Not only does this affect mortality rates, but those that do survive have been shown to have problems with physical development that affects their later stages of life. Newborn lambs, for example, exposed to extreme high or low relative humidity show increased incidence of tracheobronchial damage. The other area of concern in high humidity environments is the effect on the animal bedding. Higher litter moisture and ammonia concentrations are the result. This increases the spread of disease, affects the meat quality, and exacerbates all the negative effects of high humidity that we've already discussed. So one of the best things you can do for your livestock and poultry in high humidity climates is to change out that bedding frequently. Unfortunately for the hobby farmer or homesteader, continually monitoring and controlling the relative humidity in the environment your animals live in isn't a real option. Selecting species and breeds 
to raise that are better adapted to your environment is always recommended. So do a little research to find out which animals are going to do best. And understanding how humidity can affect them and putting forth a little extra effort to prevent some of the problems can really help. Yeah, as we said earlier, there simply isn't a lot published on the subject, so sharing experiences can really help. Have you kept livestock or poultry in high humidity environments? Which animals work best for you? And what were some of the problems and or solutions that you discovered? We'd love to read about your experiences in the comment section. And if you like watching videos like this one, please click the like button and consider subscribing. It helps us make the content that you're interested in. Until next time, happy hobby farming. Bye everybody.